self-automated and task-performing robot. How does it operate? We will learn about the structures and principles of robots today. All about robot. Lesson two, structure. Robots can be divided into HW, body and controller, and SW, control technology. Hands and arms play the most pivotal role in humans' physical actions. Industrial robots were modeled after the structure of human arms. This is an industrial robot of Hyundai Robotics, HS220. It is the best-selling robot in Korea. First, let's find out about its appearance. Base body, lower frame, upper frame, arm, wrist body, wrist holder. These six separate links consist of a robot. If that's so, how does a robot move? Robotic joints, just like human muscles, have servo motors and reducers to move. Servo motors are the power source. They work as engines and generate torque. It is a part associated to the robot's operation speed and loading weight. In order to generate high speed and high torque, it uses a powerful motor adopting the strongest magnet, neodymium. Reducer as a power transferring medium. Albeit different in sizes, among other industrial robots, the repeat accuracy should be very precise below 0.001 inches or 0.0254 millimeters for micro robots. Thus, a reducer is connected to the servo motor which raises the precision rate which increases the reducer ratio. The HS220 has six servo motors and reducers respectively. They are installed in each link connecting joint to move in six directions. Forward, backward, x-axis, left, right, y-axis, up, down, z-axis, rx, roll, ry, pitch, rz, yaw. This is called the degree of freedom, DOF. It is a unit to indicate the number of independently movable joints. Such a robot is called a multi-joint robot, or six DOF robot. Thanks to that, a robot can take various postures within its workspace. The second, controller. Like the brain, heart, and nerves, a controller involves in calculating, sending commands, and supplying energy. As such, it is composed of a range of components. SMPS, switching mode power supply, to provide energy. It provides power to various electronic circuits and devices used in the controllers and robot. CPU module, to control behaviors like the brain. It instructs a robot to determine its path and performance. Servo driver module, corresponding to the heart. It enables robotic joints to move by controlling current in the robot's blood. Sequence module, corresponding to a human sympathetic nerve. It controls a robot safely and rapidly in the event of an emergency. Input-output module, equivalent to the detection responsive nerve to surroundings and stimuli. It is responsible for the interface between a robot and external world. To sum up these components, a controller delivers behavioral commands to the body and power to each module. As an additional component, we also have the wire harness. It is a bunch of wires and signal devices that connects the robot and controller. EtherCAT and CAN communication lines to deliver data. Also, there is the DC cable to provide power. Third, control technology. Control technology is a field to operate robots to their usages swiftly, accurately. It normally takes a form of SW in a CPU module within a controller. The advantages of robots lies in their ability to easily modify a program, thereby allowing it to be applied in various occasions. In a range of industrial settings, it is applied to transporting goods, to auto factories, and or shipyards for welding. 
To fully utilize a robot to its usage, a programming environment must be established. This is referred to as the user interface. A typical example of it is Teaching Pendant. The display shows the programming language HR Basic and the status of the robot. It also offers a programming environment for robotic control, including their paths. What do we need to accurately control the path and speed of a programmed robot? First, we calculate each robotic joint, link location, and position derived from the location of servo motors. At the time, we calculate the required power for motor based on the size of load and inertia. The second role of the control technology is to chart out and control the robot's movement with the results. Besides, the ability to recognize objects with a machine vision is also a part of control technology. Including the recently emerging deep learning and classification tech by AI, etc. Control technologies are being developed depending on application fields. Hyundai Robotics has R&D teams dedicated in developing these components. The mechanical system R&D team for base bodies the control platform team to develop controllers, and the application control team in charge of control technology. In the absence of any of them, not a single robot can be made. So the team members do their best every day. Next time we will figure out what exactly an industrial robot is, or the first generation robot.